Introduction. Um, it's a large and unwieldy title, um, the, the way that these things go. So we thought, yeah, actually, um, there's another title that we'd rather have, which is Introducing Clipisco. So we look at supporting scholarly search. And as said in the introduction, this is research that was done at the University of Waikato in New Zealand in collaboration with the Hathi Trust Research Centre. And talking about the Hathi Trust or Hathi Trust Research Centre, coming back to supporting scholars. So if we think about how do scholars go about their scholarly search, as it were. Well, traditionally, this might be how it looks like. So they go to a library, they have lots of books that, that need to be um, consulted, and then, of course, this being the conference on digital libraries, we're kind of past that, we think. And what we can do is we query all sorts of digital libraries, and one of them is the Hathi Trust Digital Library. So what they have is digitized and OCR'd books, and quite a lot of them, 14 million volumes. Stephen will tell you the exact number as of tomorrow in his keynote talk tomorrow. So if you want to know more about the Hathi Trust Digital Library, come to the keynote tomorrow. So that was my little advertisement. Um, so those 14 million volumes have 6.8 billion pages of text. And what you can do with them is you have text-based search. And suddenly, it doesn't quite feel that terribly modern anymore. And you're more reminded of, oh my god, once I have the library and all these different books, how do I really find what I'm looking for. So let's assume, just for the moment, let's assume we're all humanities researchers interested in the little island of Niue, tiny island close to New Zealand. Well, from here, it's close to New Zealand. So traditionally, the scholars would probably travel there, look at the island, flora, fauna. Then later on, other scholars would look at archives. And now we're at the point of saying, yes, why don't you just go to the digital library and find all the documents that are relevant. So let's assume we do that. So we use the Hathi Trust Digital Library, we type in Niue, and what we find is 96,000 items. 96,000 items actually isn't enough. I've no idea how you would then go through all 96,000 items as a scholar, but it definitely isn't enough, because what it does not take into consideration is all the synonyms. You think, well, what do you mean? Niue is an island with a name. Well, actually, even island names have synonyms, because different people live there over time. They have their different languages. <coughs> so they refer to it as Niue or as Rock of Polynesia. And then, of course, at some point, the English arrived and called it Savage Island, uh, which, of course, people living in Niue would never do. So that's the first thing. So you need to look for all those words, because if you want to find out what the English on their travels wrote about this island, they would actually refer to it by a completely different name than the actual inhabitants. So you come up with overall 111,000 search results that you need to check whether any of those are relevant for your research about the island Niue. Actually, this is what that looks like. So you can't do this all in one go, so you have to go one after the other. So you somehow have your little, oh, sorry, your little list of synonyms and you go through. You check whichever, digital, don't move, okay, don't move your end. <laughs> whichever digital library you want to use, you need to check all your different synonyms that you have. 11,000, 1100,000, okay. Well, actually, 1100,000 is too much, you might say. And you're actually quite right, it is too much on so many levels, not just it is too much for you to read and look through. It definitely is too much, because what it does is it includes homonyms. Again, you think, what do you mean? New Ireland, now where do these homonyms come from? Yes, well, the English, remember. The Savage Island, well, that wasn't the only island they referred to like that. And it wasn't even a specific island all the time. So this is a text from 1910, a speech in which someone complains about the Irish railway system 
saying it was about as neglected as if it had been a savage island in some distant ocean. No, they didn't talk about the new way. So that's a text that you would definitely find you actually would want to get rid of because there's nothing to do with what you're interested in. So then the other thing that can happen is that in addition to all these valid words you found, you find some that shouldn't be in there. You find OCR mistakes. And they look like this. So your text-based search, yes, I can see some people frowning, thinking, what is this? That's exactly what happens. But you look at it and think, what exactly? The system interprets this as new way. And of course, as you finally get to the text, you find out now it has nothing to do with Niue. It's nine of the counties in Wales. So totally unrelated. So you might think this is actually rather complicated. So you have your synonyms, then you need to make sure that you get rid of the homonyms. You look at all the, the results, you get rid of all your OCR mistakes that are in there. Well, actually, Niue is one of the easier and simpler cases. So if we look, for example, at the example of Mari astronomy. Mari astronomy is a term for which there's a Mari term in and of itself. But then a lot of the texts, again, are in English. In English, probably, the, the term Mari astronomy isn't used as such, because it's a Mari concept. So looking for Mari and astronomy is not actually sufficient. So what people end up doing is that they create collections of marker terms, terms that indicate that this could possibly be the right thing, which is different to having synonyms. So you have words, Maori words for astronomers, then you have the English word astronomers, you have long lists of English star constellations, you have the Maori star constellations, and Rangi, the colleague that we work with who is interested in Maori astronomy, he actually has a collection of about 200 terms that he uses regularly. So those are terms in Maori and English, and whenever he discovers a new source, a new digital library, a new library catalog, he takes out his trusted little list of words, 200 of them, and actually types them in one by one to check if anything interesting is in that particular digital library. What he gets in the end is documents in at least two different languages. So you have all sorts of problems with cross-language discovery of terms. And many of those are unrelated, because most of the, the documents that come back are actually not talking about Maori astronomy. So one of the problems that is there is that the term for um, Matariki in Maori refers to the, what we in English refer to as the Pleiades, but it also refers to the Maori New Year, which has to do with when the Pleiades are actually coming over the horizon. So whenever you look for Matariki, you can find at least two different meanings of this word, and most of the time it will actually refer to the public holiday. Okay. So what we want to do is, instead of having all these different synonyms, here again coming back to Niue, so having our repeated search for all the different words, what we want to do is to say, well, let's search for a concept. Let's search actually for the island, if, if we had a way of pointing to the thing we actually mean, the concept of the island. And that's what we do in our Capisco system, which means in Italian, I understand, so that's why we thought this, this is what we take as a name. So in addition, instead of having the manual removal of all those false positives, we help by actually referring to the actual thing, by referring to the island Nui you might get rid of all those homonyms that you actually didn't mean to include. And to some extent, this could even remove some of the OCR problems, but well, not actually all of them, but some of them. Okay, so this is the session on ontologies and semantics. Here comes my confession. There's no ontology and there's no semantic search. It still belongs here. I'm not saying it's the wrong place. <laughs> But as such, we're not using an ontology, and we're not actually using the classic semantic search strategies, like Sparkle queries, for example. So let's just look at what it means, semantic search, or even text-based search, just so that we, we can talk about what is different and how we approach it. So in the traditional um, keyword-based search, so what you have right-hand side, you would have the source text, which are basically words, 
all together. You put them in an index, you create the index, you know all about that part. And then you have the literal, the keywords that are coming in. And then you look at those keywords in your index. So that's normal lexicographic search. So if we then look at semantic search, what happens is that most of the time, for semantic search, we don't actually have text documents. What we have is semantic structures. We have the combination of literals and concepts together that refer to an ontology. So you have information encapsulated in a semantic unit. And those ones then are also put into an index, actually not just once. You have an index for the literals, one for the concepts, and you have the link between the ontologies and the concepts. And then on the left-hand side, you come with your nice Sparkle queries, if you can, that is, because Sparkle queries aren't that straightforward and easy to use, which again, you have concepts and literals that refer to each other, and then you go into the index and you find what you want to find, hopefully. So what do we do differently? Well, for one, we also start out with literals. We did not want to use any Sparkle queries or any complex queries, but instead use ordinary keyword queries. On the other hand, we're actually working with a digital library, which means we have text documents. So we have bunches of literals. So what we do is we translate each of those literals into their concepts, and then those concepts get indexed quite the same way that we would normally do with the literals in the text-based search. So that's exactly the same process in the middle. So the really interesting bit really happens over here. How do we translate between the literals and the concepts? Basically, how do we find out what a word means? I mean, I've just introduced that all these problems appear in the search because it's not quite clear what you mean with the word, and now I'm just saying, oh yeah, we just translate that into a concept. That's what I basically I'm talking about. How do we do this? Okay, so the core function for our system is disambiguation. Disambiguation is Basically, the translation I just talked about, disambiguation means to establish a single semantic or grammatical interpretation for, in our case, for the words in the documents and for the words in the query. So, two kinds of translations. We translate the query and we translate the actual documents. Okay, so let's have a look at that. Let's first start with the query. So what is a query in this case? This might be a single word or two or three words, but not more than that. So they're actually really hard to disambiguate. You have a single word. Well, how do you want to say what it means? This is just the word. But on the other hand, we thought, well, instead of doing some nifty automatic thing saying, oh, but you searched before for this, perhaps that's in the same context. Perhaps, we, yeah. so you need to create some kind of context history, some, something, we thought, well, this is an interactive system where the user is actually literally sitting down the moment the query comes in. There they are, they've just hit enter and said, this is my query. Why don't we just turn around and ask them? Wouldn't that be the simplest thing to do? What did you mean? Which is basically what we do. So this is the search interface. So we have semantic search, at least this in the middle with the one query search bar. It looks very much like Google One bar, and you type in your query. So in this case, it's a query that uses a bit more than new ways, and you have new ways, Samoa, James Cook. And then you say, yeah, okay, that's my query, off we go. And we come back, and for the first term, new way, we say, what sense of new way did you mean? And we offer a list of possibilities. And the user then picks their option of what they meant out of the list of possibilities. So they look at the list and they say, oh, actually, I meant this one. So they click this one. Good. Okay. So we say, yeah, good. We got that. We translated this. Of course, I can't show anything. It doesn't look any different. The word new way and the concept new way, the moment I show it, we only have words. So of course, it looks just the same. So in this case, it looks orange, but you know, just to indicate that this has actually changed from the word. And then we go ahead and say, okay, my next term is Samoa. And we ask again, what sense of Samoa did you mean? So you see, you get the idea of what we're doing. The interesting question, of course, is now, OK, how did we get these explanations, the semantic definitions? So we gather those from a knowledge base that we created. And basically, I'm saying 
hold off just a moment. I'm going to talk about this, just not yet. Okay, so we said we had the user side and then we have the side of the documents. Well, for the side of the documents, we can't go back and say to the author, what did you mean? So we really have to work with the document. That, that is about all we have. So what we do there is that we use the whole text as context. We look at a word and we use the words around it as context for this word. And we basically look for terms that are unambiguous or as little ambiguous as possible if you can. So for example, if you look at the two terms set and tennis, set is highly ambiguous. Set can be all sorts of things. Whereas tennis is actually pretty narrow. And if you have set and tennis together in close proximity, you can be pretty sure we're actually talking in this text about a tennis match instead of perhaps set theory from mathematics. You wouldn't go just by two words. Yes, it could still be an example in the mathematical book. So you would want to look at more words than, than just two of them. Okay, so what we look for is do the concepts actually support each other? So, for example, we could have Matariki, New Year, public holiday appearing in the text. Or we could have Matariki, Huanga, and Koku, which are all Maori star names. So you can see that the first one most likely talks about the public holiday. The second one is a really good candidate for Maori astronomy. So, how do we do this? How do we do the translation? How do we find out what are, what are the options in, in all the senses? So we have a knowledge network where we have words, concepts, and context. So it's a concept in context network, which no one can pronounce, so it's the CIC network. So what we do there is that we see this with Wikipedia as a link structure. So we're not just taking Wikipedia words, but we take the relationships between the different articles in Wikipedia. So for example, let's assume that there's an article about Miure Island, that's supposed to represent the whole article in Wikipedia, then that title, because again, we can't just say this is concept number 200, which it actually is. But given that this is no good way of talking about it, I'm saying, well, this is the concept new way. Though it shouldn't have the word, because once we come to a word, it's a word to a concept. Well, let's just go with this for the moment. So this is the concept new way, because there is a Wikipedia article. And then we look for other articles and we say, is there any other article that refers to this concept in its text? So we might find the article that is called Monarchies in Oceania, and it uses Niue Freikai. And that is a link that refers over to Niue. So what we get is a word, a word for the concept Niue Island. So this is actually one of the synonym words. And that's the context. In the context of monarchies in Oceania, the term New Fekai refers to the concept New Island. So this is how you get your concepts, context, and words together. The more words you have, the more synonyms you have for the same concept. So we then store them as triples in a word context concept relationship. So this is an example, this is not exactly how it looks like, so it's a simplified one, but just to have a look at it. So if we just look at this part here. <coughs> so we said the word Matariki, so again, I have the same problem of saying what's a concept, what's a word, because all we have is words. So the blue ones with the quotation marks are the actual words, whereas the green ones are the concepts, which should be numbers, but then this is really boring to look at, so I'm using words as well. So the term Matariki, has, in some context, the meaning of Maori New Year. And it has that meaning in the context, for example, of holidays. The same term refers to the Matariki star cluster in the context of Maori astronomy. Hugely simplified, but you can see the idea of how this works. Right. So overall, we have 4 million concepts and about 100 million triples in the network. So for the system, how does that now actually work? So we come along with our seed concepts taken out of Wikipedia. We create the knowledge base. 
And then we go, in this case, to the Hathi Trust Corpus, but it would work for any other digital library, and we do semantic document analysis. This is our disambiguation. Going through, analyzing each of the terms that appears, and finding out what the concepts are. Then we create the concept index, which looks very much like an ordinary word index, just that it's not words, it's concepts we're referring to. Then on the other hand, we have the scholar, who has a semantic search interface, Again, a keyword-based interface where we then ask back, what did you actually mean? And they can create work sets, so they can store their search results. They can search through their search results, order them by different semantics, explore these work sets. And we have some expert scholar tools that allows us to go back and use the concepts that we've found out. And then a curator could come and actually export these concepts and put them back into the original digital library saying, well, it's not just semantic enhanced search that we can do, but because now we have identified all these synonyms, we could now enrich each of the texts by putting all the synonyms in the metadata and say, well, this might now make it easier, even if you just have text-based search. So, nice example, as I find, is as we did this work and we tried it out, we discover things because there's so much information in the knowledge base that it's not that we actually, you know, we didn't put it in manually, so there's stuff in there that we didn't expect. So one of the things that happened is that if you look for puck, well, the thing that we thought of is, oh yeah, let's have the distinction between puck and mythology, like Shakespeare, puck, Midsummer Night's Dream, and ice hockey puck. Oh, that's nice, we can do that. And then suddenly we got a result back, and we thought, what? why is that related? Why are we getting this? So what it does, it kind of discovers, well, it knew already, we didn't. It was discovers Robin Goodfellow. We got back the poem in which we have Robin Goodfellow in nimble toes. And then we actually needed to go to Robin Goodfellow and find out, yeah, lots of references to the Robin Goodfellow. Actually, it turns out, Punk's original, normal, ordinary human name is Robin Goodfellow. And Shakespeare's using that, and we just didn't know. So the system allows you to really discover new concepts, new names, new synonyms, and find those as well, because you're actually not looking for the word, but for the concept. Okay, so what we got in the end, instead of having the repeated search for words, we now have the search for concepts using semantic disambiguation. And what we get is we find more documents. Oh joy, more documents. So what we find here in our two examples, we went in, in both cases, we went in with Niue. In one, we find the result line Niue. In the other one, we find Savage Island. And it actually really refers to Niue. And we have less documents. Well, we have less wrong results. So we get increased precision because we get rid of the Irish Railway. That no longer appears. And in addition to all of this, we can actually export the semantics which we may then interpret as semantics or just as words, because we can, because we have all these synonyms now, and that might then enrich the ordinary text-based search. So if you're interested in looking at the system, it's not live online at the moment, but what we have is a video where you can actually step through and see how each of the parts function. Thank you very much, and um, I'm now open for questions.